We are so happy that you are starting the year off right here at Coral Gables Congregational Church. We are a part of a denomination called the United Church of Christ, where we say each and every week, we welcome you, no matter who you are or where you are on your life journey. We want to especially welcome visitors and guests who are with us for the first time today. We are so very honored by your presence, and we do hope that following our service, all of you will join us in our fellowship hall for a time of informal conversation and some refreshments. We also want to extend a warm welcome to our online congregation, those of you worshiping with us from around the nation and even around the world. We are so happy to have you, and we're now going to ask that all of you, whether you're worshiping right here in the sanctuary or at home in front of your computer screen, to sign in to let us know of your presence. Here we have red pads, and you'll send them down the pews and send them back, look at names of folks around you so you can greet each other by name. And at home, if you will just sign in on the form that's available to you on your computer screen, that would be terrific. Thank you very much, all of you. We want to especially welcome this morning members of our German congregation. Often they have their own New Year's service, but today we have invited them to be with us as part of a common worshiping community. And to bring a word of welcome to all of them is our own Al Weber, who is a German speaker from his childhood and his youth being brought up in a German family. So, Al, you want to extend a welcome to our German family. Good morning. Auf diesem wunderschönen Florida Morgen begrüßen wir zusammen unsere deutschsprachigen und unsere englischsprachigen Gemeinden. Wir versammeln heute im Vorgriff die Möglichkeiten, die Vollkommenheiten und die Freuden des kommenden Jahres. Wie wir immer sagen, dies ist der Tag, den der Herr gemacht hat. Wir wollen uns jubeln und uns am Eben freuen. Thank you, Al. And welcome to our German congregation, all of you, as well. We are into January, which means we have so many wonderful activities and events coming up, and we want you to come and be a part of so many of those. First and foremost, this coming Saturday night is our Three Kings party. We are going to have such a great time. I know it's going to be so much fun. We are going, unfortunately, you're not invited because it's an adult-only party, but we hope that all of you adults will come and be a part of such a great celebration. Tickets are available after church today in our fellowship hall. Come get tickets or you can order them online, but we really, truly hope that you will come and welcome the new year in such a festive way. Also, the month of January, we have lots of offerings for you to grow your faith and to think about theological kinds of things and things of the Spirit. And you will see in our bulletin, we have two offerings. One, the Limper uh, presentations that are coming up early January, and then later in the month, we have our Scholar in Residence. And we look forward to welcoming you to those also. So friends, it is in the beauty of this space and the joy of this new year filled with so many possibilities in the warmth of our community together that we now gather in a time of worship. Thank you. 
I invite you to stand as you are able for our call to worship. A shining light has led us far. Ancient songs have strengthened our spirits. A gift of new life has dispelled our fears. A newborn's cry has opened our hearts.
Matthäus 2, Verse 1 bis 12. Da Jesus geboren war zu Bethlehem im jüdischen Lande, zur Zeit des König Herodes, siehe, da kamen die Weisen vom Morgenland nach Jerusalem und sprachen, Wo ist der neugeborene König der Juden? Wir haben seinen Stern gesehen im Morgenland und sind gekommen, ihn anzubeten. Da das der König Herodes hörte, erschrak er und mit ihm das ganze Jerusalem und ließ versammeln alle hohen Priester und Schriftgelehrten unter dem Volk und erforschte von ihnen, wo Christus sollte geboren werden. Und sie sagten ihm, zu Bethlehem im jüdischen Lande, denn also steht geschrieben durch den Propheten, und du, Bethlehem, im jüdischen Lande, bist mitnichten die Kleinste unter den Fürsten Judas. Denn aus dir soll mir kommen der Herzog, der über mein Volk Israel ein Herr sein. Da berief Herodes die Weisen heimlich und erlehrte mit Fleiß von ihnen, wann der Stern erschienen wäre. Und wies sie gen Bethlehem und sprach, zielt hin und forscht fleißig nach dem Kindlein. Wenn ihr es findet, so sagt es mir wieder, dass ich auch komme und es anbete. Als sie nun den König gehört hatten, zogen sie hin, und siehe, der Stern, den sie im Morgenland gesehen hatten, ging vor ihnen hin, bis dass er kam und stand ober, oben über, da das Kindlein war. Und da sie den Stern sahen, wurden sie hoch erfreut und gingen in das Haus und fanden das Kindlein mit Maria, seiner Mutter, und fielen nieder und beteten es an und taten ihr Schätze auf und erschenkten ihm Gold, Weihrauch und Myrrhe. Und Gott befahl ihnen einem Traum, dass sie nicht sollten wieder zu Herodes lenken. Und sie zogen durch einen anderen Weg wieder in ihr Land. Wort des lebendigen Gottes. If you could see the journey home, you might never undertake it, might never dare the first steps that propels you from the place you have known for the place you know not. Call it one of the mercies of the road, that we see it only by stages as it opens before us, as it comes into our keeping step by single step. There is nothing for it but to go, and by our going, take the vows the pilgrim takes, to be faithful to the next step, to rely on more than the map, to heed the signpost of intuition and dream, to follow the star that only you will recognize, to keep an open eye for the wonders that attend the path, to press on beyond distractions, beyond fatigue, beyond what would tempt you from the way. There are vows that only you will know, the secret promises for your particular path, and the new ones you will need to make when the road is revealed by turns you could not have foreseen. Keep them, break them, make them again. Each promise becomes part of the path, Each choice creates the road that will take you to the place where at last you will kneel to offer the gift most needed, the gift that only you can give 
before turning to go home by another way.
a wonderful text we have been given this day to begin the new year. A text in which wise ones follow a heavenly star on a pilgrimage that leads them straight to Jesus. I wonder what our new year would be like if we could set out right here at the onset of 2016 like the Magi with a sign to guide us and follow the divine light all the year through until we gather again next Christmas and offer our gifts to God even as we receive the divine blessing of Jesus' birth anew. It might be great to adopt the Wise One's pilgrimage story as our own as we venture into the new year but I am just jumping ahead of myself. Today we celebrate Epiphany Sunday. Epiphany Day is January 6th each year, and it signifies the day the wise men appeared at Mary and Joseph's home in Bethlehem and offered gifts to a young Jesus. Epiphany brings to a close the church season of Christmas tide or as commonly known, the 12 days of Christmas. On a very personal note, I will tell you that there was some serious talk in my household 25 years ago to name my then newborn daughter Epiphany. I decided against it and named her Elena instead to which she has expressed her gratitude countless times throughout the years. Epiphany is a Greek word that means to display, reveal, or to appear. And much in this story is revealed as we follow the journey of the wise ones. The story of the Magi's visitation to Jesus is unique to the Gospel of Matthew. We are told in the Gospel reading that the Magi, or astrologers who have studied the heavens, observed Jesus' star at its rising and set out to find the Holy Child and pay him homage. The scripture doesn't tell us where the Magi called home. It just says they came from the East. Scholars assume that they came from Persia, which is now modern-day Iran. If they did, it could have been up to a 900-mile trek, bringing them to the house in Bethlehem to greet not an infant, but a toddler, or maybe even a two-year-old Jesus. The author of Matthew writes that while doing their research, a new star was revealed to them, they had an epiphany, and they traveled to Jerusalem. Once there, the natal star appeared again over Jerusalem. Friends, because they are searching for the future king of the Jews, it makes sense that they would travel to Jerusalem, where King Herod, the current king of the Jews, was living. After they meet with King Herod, the star guides them. It does then travel across the sky and stops over a home in Bethlehem, about a six-mile journey from Jerusalem. It does not say in the scripture that there were three men. Over time, we have adopted the idea because the text mentions three gifts. Matthew does not tell us any of the Magi's names. However, 500 years after Jesus' birth, a Greek manuscript gave names to the three kings, naming them Balthazar, Melchior, and Caspar. But as you can see clearly, the Bible doesn't name them. The expensive gifts were named, though, and their meanings are significant. The gift of gold has been highly valued since prehistoric times. It has been used for money, ornaments, and in rituals. Gold is all that and so much more in today's scripture, as gold was a symbol of virtue 
and of Jesus' spiritual kingship. Frankincense is a resin from the bark of a tree that grows in Arabia and Africa. It is used in incense, medicines, and perfumes. The gift of frankincense as given by the Magi was a symbol of prayer, of Jesus' priestship, as it was used as incense by priests in worship in that day. Myrrh is a gum or sap from a tree that grows in Somalia and Ethiopia. It is used today in incense and perfumes. The gift of myrrh presented to Jesus was a symbol of his suffering, of Jesus' death, as it was used as an embalming oil and as incense at funerals and cremations. There is written precedence for such gifts being offered to a king in the Old Testament. The famous Queen of Sheba brings gold and incense to King Solomon in the book of First Kings. I think that the folks hearing Matthew back in the first century would know that story and already assume that the gifts themselves represent who the recipient is. A king, of course. The wise ones presented their gift to the child, and in return, not only do they receive the blessing of being among the first to recognize Jesus for who he really is, but God also gives them the gift of revelation through a dream. They are told not to return home the way they came, which was through Jerusalem. As it is revealed to us in the scripture, only violence and the web of empire awaits them there if they return to where Herod rules. For Herod wishes to harm Jesus, and they themselves might become party to that injustice. The unwritten question to the hearer of the scripture is, how can anyone return to the ways of empire with its perpetual leaning toward injustice and violence after just experiencing the Christ child. It just cannot be done. So they trust God to lead them home another way. The story of the wise men's journey is a deep story with layers of meaning. And I love discovering new details, metaphors, and sacred interpretations when studying the Bible. Like all biblical texts, this one can be interpreted or read in many different ways. That is the richness of our Bible. It is a story that is invitational and calls to the hearers of it still today to follow. It is a story that invites celebration. We ourselves, if you heard, as you heard, will be having a Three Kings party here this coming Saturday, to which you are all invited. But today, I would like to suggest that we accept this passage as an invitation to begin our pilgrimage into 2016. The scholar Marcus Borg said, the difference between a vacation, a trip, and a pilgrimage is the intention. The intention of a pilgrimage is to journey with God toward God. As Christian disciples, it is not the study of the stars that reveals to us the coming of the Christ child, but the light of Christ's own life and teachings calling to us through the scriptures, revealing to us that there is another way as he clearly invites us to follow. So how do we do that? How do we follow? I would like to share with you a Celtic affirmation that I believe offers us the way to follow. The way to keep our intention clearly on and in Christ offering us direction as to how we live immersed in Christ. Hear these words 
from St. Patrick. Christ with us. Christ before us. Christ behind us. Christ in us. Christ beneath us. Christ above us. Christ on our right. Christ on our left. Christ when we lie down. Christ when we sit down. Christ when we arise. Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of us. Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of us. Christ in every eye that sees us. Christ in every ear that hears us. This affirmation, this prayer can anchor us when repeated in Christ, making Christ our constant companion as well as our destination. Friends, we cannot know, we do not know what the next 365, 366 days will hold for us. But like the Magi, we do know where our journey will end. It will end with Christ. Just as it has begun with Christ for us gathered here today. We will have countless times to choose to stay on Christ's path or to veer off of it. We will undoubtedly have days filled with joys and with sorrows, days filled with challenges and renewal, days filled with ample opportunities for us to serve others as Christ did, days to choose to stay the course and love our neighbors and our enemies, or not to. Days to receive and bask in the richness of God's unfailing love and unconditional love for us, just as we are. Once we experience that love, we cannot resort to the ways of violence and injustice. We have been down that road before and we know where it leads. It leads to more violence, injustice, suffering, and pain. Brothers and sisters, once we experience that God is truly among us and consciously choose every day in every situation to remain in God's presence, then God will lead us home by another road. A new path will extend before us and we will walk it with God. This is the path that Jesus calls us to follow, the way of justice, nonviolence, peace, and love. Let us make a personal and communal pledge to live with Christ this year. Let us begin our pilgrimage today filled with the hope of how different this coming year can be as we journey with God, toward God. Amen.
this morning, we may not offer up gifts of gold, frankincense, or myrrh, but each and every week we offer up ourselves in the time of worship. We offer up our time and our talents so that the ministry of this church might be felt not only within these walls, but beyond these walls into our community and into our world. We also offer up portions of our own treasure so that others may receive the incredible gift of life and love that we have received from the newborn Christ. So let us now gather up our treasure as our ushers come forward as they receive our morning gifts. Partake of this feast, share this bread and this cup, and in doing so, know that God, the light of all time and space, is ever in our world. Come. In the long nights of eternity, in days without end, 
Our God offers a spark of hope in a world of uncertainty. And so, with all the stars of heaven, we proclaim with gladness. Glory. In times of deepest sorrow and chaotic misgivings, Jesus is an ever-living reminder of the goodness of God. Let us pray. Holy One, we remember how on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and thanked you, O God. He broke it and called it the bread of life. He then gave it to his friends to eat, to take it in, to be nourished. And so we do the same. And in that act, we are united once more with the Christ. Loving God, creator of the universe, lover of all, be with us in this sacred meal. Remind us of the powerful presence of the living Christ in these elements, that we may know that we take Christ with us wherever we go. Receive our prayer now offered in unity. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. These are the gifts of God to the people of God. Come, all things are ready.
please rise as you are able and join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. O oh God, through this bread and this cup, we have experienced oneness with you and with each other. Help us to remember our unity and spread the good news of your love wherever we may go. Amen. May God be a guiding light before you, a glorious song above you, a gentle path below you, a strengthening voice behind you, and a deepening love within you wherever you may go. Amen. Amen.